Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel DevOps Center. Today we are going to see how to create and connect Aurora MySQL RTS using an EC2. So first, I'll give you an overview. So Amazon Aurora is a fully managed, highly available and scalable relational database service offered by Amazon Web Services. It is compatible with both MySQL and PostgreSQL and provides several benefits over traditional database management system including high performance, automatic failover, and seamless scaling scalabilities. So in this video, we, we will focus specially on Amazon Aurora for MySQL. And the best part is all the steps we will cover can be done without incurring any extra cost because they are eligible for the free tier. So we'll begin. So. The first thing we're going to do is we'll sign into the AWS console. So for that, open a new web browser window and go to the AWS management console. In the console type, first we will put our email address. We'll select root user and we'll put our email address. So after that, in console, we'll type RDS in the search bar and choose RDS under services to access the Amazon RDS console. So we have typed RDS, then we'll select RDS. This way you can keep this guide open while working in the AWS console. Just remember all of this won't cost you anything extra since it is eligible for the free tier. So now at the top right corner of the Amazon RDS console, choose the region where you want to create your database instance. Currently I am using region Singapore. AWS cloud services are hosted in highly available data center facilities in different areas of the world. You have the ability to choose which region to host your Amazon RDS activity. So now in the create database section, choose create database. Now you have to select the database engine type, engine version and the template. For this tutorial, choose the standard create method and Aurora MySQL as the engine type. Select the default DB engine. And the templates will use production. Okay. Now in the settings, first is database instance identifier. This is like giving your database a special name for this tutorial use demo DB. It should be unique in your chosen location. So next is Now we'll move forward to credential settings. So next is master username. Think of it as your username to access the database. We'll use admin in this example. Next is master password. It's your secret code to get into the database. Make sure it's between eight to 41 characters long and doesn't contain slash, single blue, double blue, or at the rate. Now confirm your password. Just type your password again to make sure you didn't make any mistakes. So after that, we'll move to cluster storage configuration. When it comes to configuring storage for an Amazon Aurora MySQL cluster, you benefit from a managed service that simplifies many aspects of storage management. However, it's essential to understand how storage works within Aurora MySQL to make informed decisions. Here, select the Aurora standard option. After that, we'll move to instance configuration. TB instance class, think of this as picking the size of your database computer. For this tutorial, just go with a choice called db.r5.large, which has two virtual CPUs and 16 GB of RAM and select memory optimized classes option. It's good for the normal users to see a list of supported instance classes. Now we'll move forward to availability or durability. For this, you don't need to think about this option. It's a feature that provides high availability by creating a backup copy of your database in a different location. But it's not necessary here. 
and it comes with an extra cost. So just select skip for now. The next is connectivity. So computer source. So now ignore this option for this tutorial. It's for connecting your database to another service such as Bastion host or application server. You might not need it here. Okay. So next we'll move to network type. Stick with the default choice, which is IPv4. It's the standard way computers talk to each other over the internet. Amazon RDS supports both IPv4 and IPv6. The next is virtual private cloud. Choose default VPC. This helps organizes resources in a secure and controlled network environment. Next is DB subnet group. Go with the default subnet group. It helps manage where your data is stored secure. Next is public access. Choose no. This means if anyone have URL of your own database, they can access it easily. So choose it. Now. Next is VPC security group. It's like setting up a protective barrier around your database and it will allow connections from your current device. Remember one thing here, add SSH rule and allow port 3306 in VPC security group. Now we'll move forward for availability zone. So select no preference. Okay. So next is database port. Keep it at the default value, which is 3306. It's a channel through which your database communication with another services. Read replica right forwarding database authentication. Leave this section default as it is. Now we'll move forward for monitoring. Keep the default enable enhanced monitoring unchecked for this tutorial. Additional configuration. Leave this section default as it is. And in the end, choose create database. After creating an Aurora MySQL, RTS instance, create a Ubuntu EC2 machine with simple configuration and launch it. We'll wait until our instance created. We are making a new build to EC2 machine with simple configuration. Now we'll launch the instance. So we'll reload it to check the status. Our instance has been initialized.
Okay, so now our instance has, instance has been initialized. Then we'll copy the public address. Public IP address. And then we'll paste it to OBATS term so that we can connect it. So we'll paste IP address and we'll specify the username. And now we'll add the private key. Or it is initialized. So after launching the EC2 instance, we'll run the following commands. Now we'll type sudo apt update. First, we'll update it. So it started to get an update. So now we run the below command to install Aurora MySQL client in our EC2 instance. sudo apt get install MySQL client. We'll use this command to install Aurora MySQL client. So we will select yes. So now we'll connect to our Aurora MIS per instance. Here we're using below command to connect. Also, we substitute a DNS name endpoint use your endpoint of DB for your DB and the master username. So we'll use the MySQL at endpoint. We'll copy the endpoint. And we'll go back to the one to go over. Now, so now we'll type my SQL. H. And we'll paste the endpoint. Now dash B three three zero six. Dash U. Then we'll paste them mass user. Then we'll dash. Now we'll enter the password. After running the command, we can see this other result. So we have successfully connected with our Aurora MySQL instance. So now we'll run one command to check. will type yes. So okay, it's running successfully.
So we're done.